Hit it. Welcome to the Test Talks Podcast, the place to go to geek out on software testing. And now your host, whose mission is to help you succeed with test automation, Joe Colantonio. Hey, it's Joe, and welcome to another episode of Test Talks. Today we're going to speak about quoting all about his new Sonar WebDriver plugin, which is a static code analysis tool that helps you follow best practices for writing WebDriver Selenium or Appium test. If you're into writing clean Selenium code, you don't want to miss this episode. Really excited to have Quo back on the show. He is a hands-on test automation architect and has a ton of experience. He's been focusing on implementing test automation strategies and designs for test infrastructure, uh, organizations, for all types of applications on web, mobile, and I think his latest passion is API test automation. Ko is actually going to be joining us as one of our roundtable experts at Automation Guild, an online conference dedicated 100% to helping you succeed with creating automation awesomeness. And if you hear this on Sunday, there's still time to register. If you're listening anytime after Wednesday, the event is over and you missed out. So uh, if you haven't already and you're hearing this early enough, make sure to head on over to automationguild.com and register today. Test Talks is sponsored by the fantastic folks at Sauce Labs, the cloud-based automated testing platform that eliminates the need to maintain your own Selenium grid and test infrastructure. Try it for free today. Visit testtalks.com and click on the Sign Up Now link under the Homepage Sponsor section. Hey, Quo, welcome back to Test Talks. Hi, Jeff. Thanks. Great to be on the on te- Test Talks again. Awesome. So today I'd like to talk about how to improve your WebDriver test code by linting, as well as other automation awesomeness. But before we get into it, what have you been up to since last time we spoke, since I think it was episode 172? It's been a year ago. So I know you're working on mobile testing. Are you still doing a lot of mobile testing? Or what's your latest thing that you're into? Yeah, so the last time we talked uh, was about the mobile test pyramid. So that's uh, all about mobile testing. Um, so actually, after that, I was more into the web uh, testing and uh, REST API testing. Um, so I've been more busy with that uh, lately. And, and yeah, therefore, this this new plugin I, I wrote. Cool. So that, that's what I'd like to talk about first. Um... I guess there are a few few things I like to hit on first uh, about terminology to make sure everyone's on the same page. First, what is linting? Linting, well, in my opinion, is um, uh, static code analysis. Uh, so whenever you write uh, code, so in this case, test code, um, it gets uh, analyzed either uh, when you push it to a repository or even, uh, even uh, instantly when, while you're writing the code. That's if also uh, possible. So basically, just uh, analyzing whether you're following uh, good practices or you have any bugs in your uh, code uh, while writing it. Awesome. So the next thing is um, Sonar. I know a lot of people have used Sonar, but folks that haven't, what is Sonar? What what's Sonar? What's it used for? Yes, yeah, Sonar is a um, well, application that does uh, static code analysis for different uh, platforms and languages. Um, so actually, I was uh, looking for, okay, I would like to write a plugin that does this static uh, code analysis for me. But so I was looking at, okay, which tool is like the most, like the de facto standard in the industry. So I came across uh, Sonar because I, I encountered this tool almost in, well, large organizations is almost always there. Um, and if, if not, the uh, people are talking about it to, to integrate it. Um, so it's, it's, um, uh, it's heavily used, uh, for static code analysis. Um, well, till now, uh, especially for, uh, uh, application code. Very cool. So I, I guess, uh, why do you think uh, linting is important, especially with functional testing? I know a lot of people do it for unit testing, but why, why functional testing? Yeah. So actually. I was inspired by a talk from Dave Hefner at SauceCon, I think at the beginning of this year, uh, where he talked about uh, flaky flakiness of tests and, and that we should focus more on utilizing tools uh, we have. 
in order to uh, reduce the flakiness um, uh, of your test. And that can sometimes be found in uh, the setup of your uh, test code or the quality of your, uh, of your code. So in the, in the testing industry, compared to the uh, application development, we don't have many tools that does static code analysis or for, so I was focused on web driver test code and I couldn't find uh, any that was focused on the uh, Java-based implementation of, of, of Selenium. So that's how I started with, uh, with this plugin. All right, so for the folks that don't know, I believe Dave Hefner, like you said, did have a, a popular session on best practices for, for Selenium code. And it would be cool that when you check in code, it can analyze and make sure you're following best practices or maybe flag certain issues. So how did you bake this into, I guess first, what is the solution? I believe it's a Sonar WebDriver plugin. So how do you use it? And then what does it do once you 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 install it or however you configure it? Right, so this plays a plugin for, for Sonar. So whenever you have a Sonar server there, uh, you can install it from the marketplace. Uh, uh, got recently uh, accepted uh, in the marketplace, so it's easy to install. Um, it's also possible to use a tool called SonarLint in, in, in your IDE. Uh, for, for example, I use IntelliJ, and then I can just configure a SonarLint to point to a local uh, Sonar server. Uh, I also have a Docker image where it's really easy to set up a uh, local server if you don't have Sonar running uh, in order to get that fast feedback while you're writing uh, the test code. So what's the benefit someone would get by using this solution? Could you give us an example of how, how it would be used in a typical workflow for an automation engineer? Yeah, so um, I've been, uh, like in my experience, I've uh, seen a lot of test code and uh, been analyzing that. And uh, there's so many talks about best practices. And these are very, very good and very valuable because we should follow the best practices. Uh, so actually, I started to write this plugin just to save uh, myself a lot of time in analyzing test code, um, especially the basic stuff like, um, OK, you know, you have, you have uh, test classes that contain your test, and you have non-test classes such as page objects. For example, they should not. Uh, contain assertions, and that is one of the checks that the plugin is, is doing. Other things uh, are usage of implicit and explicit uh, weights uh, and hard-coded slips, uh, and that, that we should not have them, and we should handle it in a, in a, in a better way. Um, and also some checks about locators. So it, it, you don't want locators that are tied to your page layout, so you rather have like a specific attribute or an ID where you uh, locate the element, uh, which is much more robust. So if the application changes the layout, uh, it does not break your test. The other simple things like no web driver commands in your test, because they should be uh, in, a, in a base page. Uh, so this is all really based on best practices. Yeah, so it really started about saving myself a lot of time by uh, getting rid of these basic checks so I don't have to do it manually or look at that uh, manually. So the tool will just give me that feedback and uh, it will produce, okay, on which line uh, it's not following this uh, best practice and it will give you a, um, a, a compliant code example uh, opposed to the non-compliant uh, code that was uh, detected. So at what point are you prompted? See, I'm writing code in IntelliJ. Is it like in real time or is it once I have the code written, I, I somehow click on analyze? Like how does it work that from, from that point of view? Yeah, so if you use SonarLint, uh, it's actually instantly. So when you're writing it, so you when you're typing, it uh, immediately analyzes it and, you, and it will just highlight uh, that piece of uh, code that uh, is... Um, not uh, compliant to the check. Also good to mention that each check has a different priority. Some is like an, an, an info message, like, okay, maybe this doesn't seem right. Maybe you should try it in a different way or a thing like a hard code to sleep. It's, it's really like a, a critical uh, issue. You should uh, not do that. So it, it will 
uh, also tell you uh, what you can do with this feedback. Awesome. So how customizable is it? I, I know a lot of people get upset when you say best practices. They say they're only good practices. So say someone doesn't agree with the way you rank something. Can someone customize their their instance of, of this plugin? Yeah, in, in Sony, you can, uh, you can alter it. Um, um, but one of the reasons why I made it open source is to get the feedback from the community and make and the rules like really, really good. Uh, because currently... Well, it's, it's an opinionated implementation, but you can toggle those uh, priorities of the rules uh, to your situation. But still, yeah, I think the uh, many more rules can be added, and hopefully that will come uh, uh, when more people are using this uh, this plugin. Why do you think it's important to have these types of tools in your software development lifecycle? I think it's it's good to highlight that the um, uh, it, it's really like a, uh, a gap I see in the in the testing industry that that we should uh, aim for more f- or faster feedback in the uh, in the SDLC uh, because we're uh, there's so many tools coming out that are similar as in how to execute the test, but uh, fewer tools about how to get even faster feedback like static code analysis on Tesco. So, Carl, I think it's been out for two weeks now. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's been longer or less. But uh, based on how long it's been out, have you got any feedback and, and, and you, you took, you've took taken that feedback and baked it back into the plugin or people have started contributing? Well, not so much uh, actively on, on, on the uh, project itself, but I do get plugin like uh, uh, like face to face for people I know who are running this running a project with with this plugin and and, and see what comes out uh, comes out of it, and then we have like discussions about okay, uh, should we improve this rule or is it a very uh, specific to your situation? Uh, I, th- I think these discussions are are very healthy. There is currently one issue with the plugin with a with a sonar version. I'm currently in the middle of fixing that one, so it, it should be more compatible with uh, also older versions. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, more feedback. But again, I, I really started this just for myself to, to save me a lot of time, and hopefully it can help uh, others as well. I have a user case in mind. Let me run it by you, see if this is what it's good for. Right now, I say this a lot, I have eight to 10 sprint teams and they all write their own code on their own teams, but then there's code reviews and they ne- they always mess it up. They never get it right. So they always have to put me on. I need to look at it. I never have time. I'll miss things. So it's almost like this is like a pre-check before code review that can, as someone's coding upfront in real time, tell them, hey, you probably want to change that because this is not uh, this is not a good practice and it's going to get flagged in a code review. So it should save you time overall because less issues will, will creep into the code base uh, in production. Is that is that correct? Yeah, so basically you, you can utilize the, uh, the sonar link for instant feedback, or you can also uh, configure it on your CI pipeline. So whenever you uh, commit something, a build will, uh, will run and, and scan the code. And then you can say, okay, based on this, okay, I don't want any critical issues during this build, so it cannot be merged. So it, it, it can really save you a lot of time, uh, save you a lot of time, but uh, also be careful about the the rules because in your in each situation, sometimes it's not that applicable, or you want to change the priority. Uh, so you don't want the, the tool to be like an an annoying thing, <laughs> right? It, it it needs to help you achieve the goal as in fast feedback and getting rid of some basic checks that you don't have to do manually. Yeah, I like to be annoying though sometimes to people. So this this will be awesome. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when a tool is annoying, it's a bit different than a person. <laughs> <you> know, <right? laughs> um, all right, so how hard is it to implement in an existing code base? Do you have to set up your project a certain way for this to work? Or if someone's using, say, Cucumber with Java, would, would this work? It doesn't matter as long as you're using Java behind the scenes. Yeah, so it's based on the, uh, so any Selenium code that is, uh, Selenium test code that's based on the Java, it will work. And it also supports the uh, the Cucumber, the Cucumber plugin. So, um, but yeah, maybe if people are using other frameworks as well, we can add that. Uh, check as well, but 
basically it looks at some annotations whether to uh, to determine whether it's a test class or non-test class. Yeah, to, just to give you an example. So if someone wants to get started with it, it sounds like it's a, how, how, what's the quickest way someone can get up and running with the, the Sonar WebDriver plugin? Yeah, so let's say you don't have uh, experience with uh, Sonar or looking at Sonar reports. I would say uh, just run the Docker image that is uh, on the readme. Just with one command, you will have the Sonar server running together with the plugin already installed. With that, you can run a command in the root of your project to scan the project and see the, see the result. I, I would say the next step would be checking out the Sonar lint that's just pointing to your server. So in this case, the, the, the local host URL, and then select the uh, Sonar of our driver check, and then uh, you're good to go. So I think this is an awesome idea. How hard would it be for someone to start contributing or helping out? Well, I think it's pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it uh, honestly it took me quite some time to to understand how the Sonar plugin works because the documentation is, is quite limited. But it's, uh, so uh, basically it's, it's test-driven. So you write the non-compliant test uh, class or example. Then you define your check or your rule that scans this test file and you mark on which line in your example is non-compliant. And based on that, it will run a unit test and if that passes, that's actually the implementation of the, of the check. Also some additional inf information or documentation for Sonar for the reporting. So when you get the feedback, okay, I'm, my code is non-compliant, but I mean, the, the examples that you get back and that's the documentation that comes with uh, each uh, each check. Uh, but yeah, if people are a bit lost to contribute, just contact me and uh, I'll uh, I'll walk you through. So I know you did mention it works with Java and Selenium. How about Appium? Yeah, so actually the the it, it's actually based on the WebDriver API, so it should work with uh, Appium as well. But I know that Appium uses some very specific mobile. Uh, classes. So I, th I think this, this is one of the areas that it can be extended to. It doesn't mean that the current checks does not work with APM test code. I mean, it should, it should work with that. Uh, but I think, uh, for example, like uh, locators, there are more locator strategies uh, when you have APM test code, such as by accessibility ID, uh, stuff like that. These, these things are, uh, can be added to the plugin. So I'm always interested in new shiny things. I know this is fairly new, but what's even newer? Is there anything on your roadmap that you like to implement later down the road that was just too much to get on the first iteration? Well, actually, it's been uh, quite some iterations to get this first version uh, going. Uh, because first I started with uh, just a few basic checks, and then I thought, okay, this is this is not enough to have like a, a complete plugin. So now I really have like the locators check and also like whether an ID locator is valid. So it's it's a quite good good base. So yeah, looking into the uh, Appium extension would be would be something, and yeah, maybe other languages I'd like to explore uh, because Sonar is not a Java language bound, so it can also support like JavaScript or TypeScript. Uh, that's something I'd like to uh, like to explore. But I think this is really a an area in the testing industry that is quite new, as in we have so many good test tools as in to perform the testing, but not so much as in to analyze the code while you write it. Um, so I think this is something we should, or it should get more traction in the industry. Like I said, I really love this idea and I hope it really takes off. Have you got any feedback from Dave Hefner or Jonathan Lips on uh, either the Dave's vision that he had originally, or Jonathan from the Appian point of view? Yeah, so I talked to uh, Dave Hefner and I gave him a uh, walkthrough uh, through this plugin and I, he re uh, really liked it. He, he thinks someone should work on it uh, because this is a, a topic that is not fully utilized in the industry yet. And I, and I totally agree. He also had some, uh, yeah, some feedback about the, the checks I implemented. So I improved them back then. 
So yeah, it's always good to hear to from this Selenium Ninja uh, <laughs> that is a, a valuable plugin. Very cool. So just a random question. I was on your Twitter feed and I noticed you had a Tapster robot. Uh, have you have, a, have you done anything with that in real world testing scenarios? Well, actually, it's it's a, it's a very good marketing robot, actually. <laughs> if you just want to show people what you can do with automation, it's a great starter. It's, uh, so, so what I did is just actually using Dave Hefner's internet testing application and using the, the Tapster robot to, um, to log in using some form. Uh, so that was pretty, pretty neat and, and a good uh, demo. Uh, so sometimes I just automate uh, to show people what you can do with, with test automation, and that's really a, a, a great conversation starter to talk about test automation and what it can do in your situation. Okay, quote, well, before we go, is there one piece of actionable advice you can give someone to improve their linting or automation testing efforts in general. And let us know the best way to find, contact you, or to learn more about the Sonar WebDriver plugin. Yeah, so, so give the Sonar WebDriver plugin a, a, a go uh, by uh, either just uh, firing up the Docker image or install it from the marketplace on your existing Sonar server. Um, yeah, you can, you can contact me through my uh, Twitter handle or on LinkedIn. Thank you, Quo, for your linting sonar automation awesomeness. For links to everything and value we covered in this episode, head on over to testtalks.com forward slash 239. And while you're there, make sure to click on that sign up for our free trial link under the exclusive sponsor section to learn all about Sauce Lab's awesome products and services. So that's it for this episode of Test Talks. I'm Joe, and my mission is to help you succeed with creating automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Test Talks podcast. Head on over to www.testtalks.com for full show notes, amazing blog articles, and other automation awesomeness.